Welcome back. This is the second lesson in a series on using affinity for sewing. Today, I'm going to go over kind of the environment of affinity and kind of walk you through some of the things you're going to see on the screen. Let's go ahead and get started. Once you open up a page, whatever page you open up in your document will look like this. At the very top, we have our main menu, which is going to stay the same throughout, no matter which environment or studio you are working in, which is pretty typical of many programs. And we'll talk about using each of these in some of the tutorials. In our next bar, we have our different environments or our studios. The very first one is Vector. Vector is working with lines and nodes and scalable graphics. When we work with sewing patterns, we're going to be working in the Vector Studio. We'll rarely use the other studios, but I'll go ahead and show you what they are. The next studio is the Pixel Studio. The Pixel Studio is going to be for images. You'll notice that the tools change and so does the studio on the right hand side. This is going to be for working with images and pictures, which isn't really used a lot when we are working on sewing patterns. The next is the layout. This layout is helping you to lay out multi-page documents or documents that have both images and text. You can see a quick general layout and work with the arrangement here on your main artboard. The next studio or environment is only an option for those with a Canva Pro account, and that is the Canva AI Studio. This is where you can use AI to remove or replace backgrounds or even generate images based on a prompt. Again, we will not be using this for sewing patterns, so we're gonna go back and focus on the Vector Studio. When we are on the Vector Studio, you'll notice as you come across, we have some basic functions across the top, such as adding and subtracting shapes, dividing, mirroring, aligning, arranging, and our snapping. So we will use some of these in some of the tutorials that I will be going over later. If I say to turn snapping on or off, this is just the magnet here. We have another shortcut for exporting. I will show you another way in another lesson how to export, but this is a shortcut right here. Then you have the help button, which you can click on and you can ask a question if you're not sure where the feature is. You can suggest a feature or even report a bug. Next, going down, we are going to be looking at this, but it's our context toolbar. And if we look at the tools on the left or our toolbar here, we have several different tools that will perform different functions in Affinity. If I click on different tools, you will notice that this context toolbar here changes according to what tool is selected. So I can select a different tool and you'll see it change. As we go over each of these tools and how to use them, we will look at this context toolbar and how to use it. Now, looking at the tools, you will also notice that some of these have little arrows on them. If you click on that arrow, it just means there are two types of tools that you can choose from. For example, the node tool has the regular node tool and a point transform tool. If I come down to my pencil and I click on it, I have the pencil tool, a path brush tool, and a knife tool, all contained within that one tool. Again, you can come through and click on it and see what the different tools are. 
If I'm going through a tutorial and you notice you're missing one of the tools I'm working on, you can come down to the ellipses or the three dots here at the bottom where you can customize your tools. If you click on it, it's going to come up with all the tools and you can click on ones that you want to add or you can take away. I'm going to go ahead and close that now. Down here at the bottom is our fill. So the solid circle is the fill color of a shape. And the, oval, the circle with a hole in it is the stroke color. This is kind of a shortcut to our fill and stroke panel that is over here. Now coming down towards the bottom, this first one shows you the page that you're on. Since most projector files are a single page, you'll probably always see one of one. But if you do open an A0 sewing pattern, you may see one of two or two of two, depending what page you are on. The arrow here will just click to the next page. Next is our status toolbar, and that's a great one to keep an eye on as you're working on patterns. I'm going to just draw a few shapes on here just so we can see some things on our status toolbar here. I'm going to come back to the select tool and it gives you suggestions. Right now, you can see it says that I have the rectangle selected. I can drag to move it. I can click on another object to select it. I can click on empty space to deselect it, or I can push return and to enter or move or duplicate values. Also, when you select multiple objects, it will tell you how many objects you have selected and give you some suggestions. So it can really come in handy sometimes when you're working with pattern pieces and you're not sure what you have selected or everything you have selected. Coming across, we have our studios. Here we have the colors, which are the swatches and the strokes colors. Below it, we have layers, which you're going to see the sizes in the pattern and all the objects that are on your pattern. And then we have our transform panel. If at any time you're missing something from the panel over here, you can come over to Window, General, and select it. For example, if I don't have layers, let's go ahead and take it off, see it's missing. I can come over to Window, General, and then down to Layers and it's going to put it right back in my right hand studio. We also have tabs. Right now, I only have one pattern open, but as we open other patterns, which I will show you in the next lesson about opening and saving patterns, we will see multiple tabs. We also have our rulers here that will show you the scale of the document. If you don't see your rulers here or they disappear on you, you can always come change the view. If you click on the main menu and you go to view, and then you can go to show. And these are different things that you can show like our guidelines or even down to where it has the rulers. So you can turn those off or you can go to show and turn those rulers back on there is a shortcut Command R on a Mac and Control R on a Windows. That concludes our quick overview of the studios and the environment of working in Affinity. I hope you join me in the next lesson where we're going to go over opening and saving patterns. I'll see you then.